beautiful. To... Somebody did that joke to me when I walked in. I had to steal it. And Tammy is so nervous. She gave me one rule, and it was don't talk politics. Tammy, that's my last joke, I promise. I uh, hope you so it was that guy who did it. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed your uh, burritos, your molten hot lava burritos. Was that just me with like, am I just the pansiest mouth in the world? It was like, oh, this is so hot. But they were delicious nonetheless. Um, and one quick shout out before we keep going. Uh, who is the gentleman here who willingly decided to wear a Three Stooges t-shirt? Where, there you are, sir. Can you please stand up? Look at this guy. That's the shirt to wear. It's a men's breakfast. Who what? What do you mean? The fourth stooge? <laughs> and he's wearing it proudly, and it's a beautiful thing. Why not? Um, super glad you guys are here. Beyond grateful. Um, take time out of your weekend. Woke up early. I know bacon's a big draw a big incentive, and that was great. Uh, but I don't take you being li here lightly. It, it really means a lot to me. And also for people bringing their kids, that's pretty cool too. Um, the, I, I got 20 minutes, so I gotta get going. Can we just roll through this? Enough introductions. Uh, there is a masculinity identity crisis in America today, amen? You've heard this idea of toxic masculinity? Have you heard this concept? The feminist goal is to remove all things masculine from our culture and all things masculine from men. So I'm here to say, I have one message. There is no such thing as toxic masculinity. Masculinity is a virtue. You can't have a toxic virtue. The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. You can't have toxic peace or toxic joy, doesn't make any sense. And similarly, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. There is a not properly defined or lived out masculinity, however. But that's not masculinity. So I wanna put a visual and some definitions to this that have really helped me, and I hope it can help us in this fight as well. So there's a psychologist, his name was Carl Jung, J-U-N-G, it's about 100 years ago, he came up with this outline, and I really, really like it. So imagine with me, men, four triangles in a line, four triangles in a row. At the top of each triangle is a positive characteristic of a boy. This is called the boy psychology. At the bottom two corners of each of these triangles is a negative characteristic of a boy. These are called the shadow characteristics. Are you with me so far? Yes? yes. <laughs> it's getting a little more complicated than this, so you better not lose me yet. <laughs> so we're just gonna go over one triangle for the sake of time. So one of the boy psychology's triangle is called the divine child. At the top, I, I'll, for the sake of our chat here, I call it the obedient boy, okay? This is an ideal, this is the a positive characteristic, the obedient boy. At the bottom, the shadow characteristics, you have the high chair tyrant. We all know that, we've seen that kid, right? That kid is the center of the universe, he'll kick and scream until he gets his way, until mom and dad do whatever he says, that's the high chair tyrant. Then on the other side, you have the weakling prince. This is the little boy who is coddled and whines and complains and is helpless and is carried around on a pillow and everything is just too much for him and the entire family revolves around his comfort. So you have the obedient boy at the top, you have the high chair tyrant, you have the weakling prince. Okay, so that's just one triangle and there's four of those with each different things. Now imagine these four triangles and then above each of these triangles is another set of four triangles. These are the ideal masculine adult psychology. The goal of life and the goal of raising children is to take a boy from the boy psychology and transform them into these top level masculine male traits. Got it? So imagine four more, four more triangles on top of the, of the bottom four. Each of these triangles now talks about an ideal masculine characteristic. So the obedient boy, in one of the bottom triangles, transforms into the king. And that's the theme of this speech 
is the king, because the four triangles are called the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. These are the four archetypes of masculine male. So the king, in his fullness, the top of that triangle, brings order to the kingdom. The king notices and affirms, and kings praise and they bless those that are in their kingdom. This is why kids who grow up without a king in their life tend to have more chaotic emotions. That's why we see a lot of rise in ADHD and things like that, uh, and also more out of control behavior. It's because there's no king in their life. There's no stabilizing force. There's no one to bring calm. There's no one to discipline when it's needed and no one to praise when that's needed as well. So that's the king at the top. In the bottom, you have the tyrant. So the high chair tyrant then turns into the tyrant as they get older. And then the weakling prince turns into the weakling when they get older as well. And I think we've all seen the tyrant and the weakling in our daily existence as well, right? Maybe you have a tyrant boss or a weakling coworker and uh, a coward, and that's how that works. Um, so again, we can't go into all of these. But this, this morning, I just want to focus on the, the tops of the pyramids, the four ideals, the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. Can you say it with me? The king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. Those are the four that we have to remember. So the king, let's go over them quick. The king brings order to chaos. The warrior defends the weak and vulnerable with precision and purpose. The magician, this one, this one wasn't as intuitive for me, the magician brings wisdom. The magician can pierce through the lies. He sees evil for what it is and where it is and when it masquerades as goodness because that's how Satan works. And then the lover is the lover of all things that are beautiful and can also see the beauty in all things. And the lover has deep empathy and compassion. Our goal as men, as individual men, is to encompass and embody and live out all four of these archetypes. So, first things first. Do we want to be these things? Yes. Amen. Now, you may be inclined to be one or the other. Um, right? One may be more natural to you than any others, but we need to live all of these. So think of the movie Gladiator. Everyone here seen the movie Gladiator? There's, I'd see, every time I ask that, there's always one grunt. <laughs> well done, sir. The proper response is, have you seen Gladiator? No! Yeah! That's it. Well done. That's it. So uh, you think of um, uh, Maximus, right? Which, which of the four is Maximus? Russell Crowe, right? He's the warrior, right? Obviously, he's the warrior. But you'll remember two scenes in particular. Marcus Aurelius asks Maximus, when's the last time you were home? Remember this? When's the last time you were home? And Maximus said, two years, 264 days in this morning. He just wants to go home and be with his family. And then at the end of the movie, the movie's like 20 years old, so I feel like I can give you a, a, I can talk about the end of the movie. It's your own fault if you haven't seen it yet. In fact, if you haven't seen it, you should just leave. It's that good of a movie. What is your problem? Uh, he dies at the end. And in the Titanic, the boat sinks. I just, while, since I'm doing this, I might as well just give all the Marley and me, the dog dies. The bunch, we can keep going. Um, Maximus dies, and then as he dies, he has this vision of a wheat field. And in the distance is his beautiful wife and his baby boy. And his baby boy runs to him. And that's his joy. He's finally home. Uh, sorry, I'm tearing up. I have a 19-month-old boy and an 11-week-old girl. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> If I fall asleep in the next few minutes, it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, no one would ever say that Maximus isn't a man, <laughs> would you? No way. That's the lover part of his archetype. There's nothing weak about being the lover. Jesus wept. By the way, Jesus is all four of these. And you can be two. <laughs> you don't need to be a son of God. You don't need to be Maximus to be all four. We all must be all four. 
So let's apply this to the pro-life movement. You want to be the king. Think of the woman who has no man in her life, and I mean the real man in her life. A friend of mine got pregnant at a young age. Her dad told her to get an abortion. Her boyfriend wanted the baby, but believed the lie that society has told him that you have no say. This is a woman's right to choose. So he backed out. If I may, these are some, this is a perhaps strong word because I know this may be really relevant to many people here, but to use this pyramid, the dad was a tyrant. No, abort. The boyfriend was the weakling, the coward, do what you want. She had no king. Fortunately, she did. And she kept the baby, and she's an amazing mom. There are so many women here who need a king in their life, someone to bring order to the chaos. And that can come in a lot of different ways. Many pro-life centers are run by women, and that's great. But a masculine presence would be so powerful. So maybe you can consider volunteering at one of these centers. Whatever, whatever, I'm not here to do what you want, right? But whatever's in your heart, the time you can give, I, I, <laughs> you, you will be treated like a king too because they will be so grateful that you're there. You will be a king to bring order to a woman who's probably never been in a more chaotic moment in her entire life. So you want to be a king? There's one good way. You want to be a warrior? Who doesn't want that? Nice. This one's very simple. An abortionist kills, takes life. We'll save the graphic description of, of what abortion is, but you know it involves the ripping off. It depends what age, obviously, right? But in California, you get abortion up to 24 weeks. Uh, I, I beg everyone to just Google image 24-week fetus. That, I mean, you can't. It is a baby, uh, very much so. Um, it involves ripping the limbs off one by one inside the womb and then taking a forceps and crushing the skull. Uh, that abortionist ends life. You, very truly, are saving life. Rescuing the most vulnerable person in the world. What a calling. What a calling that is. What a purpose that is. You are a modern-day gladiator if you jump into this arena against a true villain as deceived as they are. So that's easy, that's a warrior. You wanna be a magician. A magician has wisdom. A magician not only can speak truth, but can see all the lies and the evil in disguise. There was a Planned Parenthood uh, uh, PR marketing campaign in Cleveland, and they bought all these billboards. And the billboards say, abortion is, and then there's an, a blank, an underline. And then it would fill in, different billboards would have a different word filled in that blank space. And they're all over Cleveland. Can I read some of the descriptions? This is from the Planned Parenthood. Abortion is a blessing, liberty, safe, a conversation. That one doesn't even make any sense. That one, a conversation, like, like a family value. Sacred. Abortion is sacred. How about this one? You want to talk about lies? You want to talk about deceit? Abortion is life saving. That's actual. Bill. Abortion is life saving. What's the truth? No, 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 no. It's life saving. Every one of these is an absolute lie. Every one of them. You see that. Most people don't. Most people don't. And a woman who's in a crisis pregnancy is being fed nothing but lies. Lies from her family, lies from her friends, lies from society, lies from herself. You can't do this. I can't do this. You are worthless. This baby is worthless. What a mistake. You can end it. It's like it never happened. All these lies. This woman needs someone who can tap into ancient 
wisdom and speak truth against these lies. You are equipped with that wisdom. You are equipped with it. And you can be that magician. And finally, the lover. You want to be a lover. Lover has deep empathy and compassion for others and can see the beauty in everything. And a lover also feels the loss of life deeply and the joys of life greatly. My wife told me a couple of years ago, we've been married for five years, my wife told me like a year or two in, Mike, you have no emotion. And I said, thank you. I missed her signs. I, didn't, I thought it was a compliment. I did not under, I missed the tone of what she was, how she said that. Context, what well, totally wasn't there at all. Said, you're right. I've prided myself on uh, compartmentalizing. Anyone here? Can we get it? I can compartmentalize my emotions, wife. I thought that was just great. She didn't. So I, I've worked on getting touch, in touch with my emotions. And sometimes that means mourning deeply. But blessed are those who mourn, who mourn for the brokenness of the world. And there's a lot of that. When you help these pro-life centers, you feel the deep pain and the confusion that's happening in a woman's life. And then when she makes the right decision, you feel the great joy of bringing life into this world. There's a list I read online of all the reasons where it's acceptable for a man to cry. Uh, and one of them is, well, who here, if dads, we got dads here, raise your hand. When, when a baby's born. When your baby's born, did you cry? That's one of the times. You will, too, when you get involved into the lives of these women. You'll cry like it's your own baby being born. And that's pretty cool. And the highs and lows in experiencing that, that's, that's a beautiful thing in life. Now, nothing in life worth having has a shortcut. There are no shortcuts. I hate life hacks. You read these life hack things on the internet? There's no life hacks to this to being this man. And you don't want it that way. But the surest way to live all four of these characteristics is to get involved in the pro-life cause and the pro-life movement. Our society desperately needs you to join the pro-life movement. And I know there's a little bit of preaching to the choir here because you're here, but maybe a couple of you just came for the baby. <laughs> so maybe I'm speaking to you specifically. We need you to be the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. What are the four again? King, warrior, magician, lover. This pro-life movement needs strong, powerful, confident, masculine men. I'll end with a quote from C.S. Lewis, The Screwtape Letters. Anyone read that book? Read that book? It's pretty unbelievable. Um, so this is the devil talking. The more often you feel, so the devil's talking to you, the more often you feel without acting, the less you will ever be able to act, and in the long run, the less you will be able to feel. So every time you have an opportunity to feel and act and you don't, you're crippling yourself to ever be able to act and feel. My, and I know you know this, but my, my, my goal here, especially in this cause, because society has told men not to act, you have no space in this realm. This realm, what are we, this, this kingdom of life, you have no space here? Nonsense. We haven't acted. I haven't acted. Men generally haven't acted, and then men have stopped feeling. So my goal here is to get you to feel again and then hopefully act. So men, let's go out and let's be kings, warriors, magicians, and lovers. Really glad you guys are here, thank you. Amen.